Uh, I have a short statement to read. Uh, just give me a few moments to read this and we'll get the meeting started. Hello, welcome to the meeting of the East Line Peter Township Board of Supervisors. My name is Corey Meyer and I'm the chairman. I want to inform all participants that this meeting is being recorded. Due to the COVID-19 virus, this meeting is being conducted virtually utilizing Zoom. This is a cloud-based platform for remote video and audio conferencing. Township building is not open for this meeting so that all participants can observe and maintain social distancing. The Zoom application is free to the public. The general public is therefore able to join the meeting by connection through the internet or by calling in by phone. The township is... Hold on one second, Corey. Take your time. It's recording. Okay, great. The township is, is expecting to utilize this vehicle for all future public meetings during and after the COVID-19 crisis. Please continue to check the township website calendar for any updates related to these public meetings. Agendas for these public meetings will also be available on the township's website and will be posted on the front of the township building. Join me in the room while observing social distancing Supervisor Glenn Everly, Vice Chair John Lowers, uh, Emergency Services Chair Bruce Paul, and Chief Dave Keynes of Lafayette Fire Company, and Township Manager Rob Hutchison. Also participating uh, on the on the Zoom, our supervisors Dave Buckwalder. Dave, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Great. And Supervisor Ethan Day. And we also okay. have uh, Tyra Hitchens, our zoning officer, playing MC and muting and unmuting and making sure we're all doing our best. Uh, in order to accommodate public comments at this meeting, the township will be accepting uh, public comments in writing or via email. Instructions for the submission of public comments are available on the township website. We will now proceed with the meeting agenda. Call the meeting to order of the East Lake Peter Township Supervisors, Monday, April 20th, 2020 meeting. Please join me in the pledge of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this point, we will take public comment for non-agenda items only. We have, looks like we have a few visitors uh, on the Zoom. If you have any public comment, as I said, there are instructions on the website uh, as well. You can raise your hand and we can call on you to uh, provide that public comment. First, Chuck, any comments from the oh, We did not receive any comments in writing and we have not on the uh, email account. Okay, any public comments from the public on the Zoom? Okay, I'll look for uh, before we uh, before we take it to vote, and we will use roll call vote as we did last time. I'm not sure if I said that or not, but we will definitely do that. Okay, uh, next on the agenda we have the consent agenda. We have two items. We have approval of the minutes of the Monday, April sixth, twenty twenty regular meeting. So everyone's had a chance to look at those minutes, the draft minutes. And then second, we have approval to pay invoices from all funds. We have a total of $191,762.28. There's one significant amount uh, on that of those bills, $8,452.22, I'm sorry, $8,452.20 to hand in hand fire company for fuel. And insurance reimbursements. I will ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion is made by 
Mr. Blower, second by Mr. Everly. Any comments from board members? Any comments from the public regarding the consent agenda? Okay, I'll ask for a roll call vote. I'll start with Mr. Blowers. Aye. Mr. Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Buckwater. Aye. Mr. Denny. Aye. And Chair, aye. Uh, motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we have old business 5A proposed petition regarding 2020 tax upset, upset sales. Uh, Ralph, you want to give us context to this? Sure. The uh, request to consider this petition was uh, sent to the township by the county treasurer's office. And um, what the uh, petition would do is uh, petition the court to delay the uh, county's usual process in proceeding to tax upset sales of real estate, delinquent real estate tax payments. Um, the sale would normally happen in uh, September of this year, um, but uh, if, if the petition goes in and the court agrees, um, the court's not currently in session, but um, if they would agree, then uh, the uh, tax upset sales would be delayed. And the purpose of this would be to give additional time to those property owners uh, who are uh, struggling with their delinquencies. It appears the petition is written as all townships and all school districts together in one, one petition. I'm assuming if a certain township or, or a school district decides not to go with it, they would they could still go for you know, the other townships and school districts could continue, or is it we either are all in or one's out and not, not doing it? Um, I think with, with this issue uh, different from the uh, issue of uh, paying at, at the base rate. Um, I think this one could probably go forward, you know, with whoever decides to do it yeah. and those that don't, uh, it's fine. The other one that you dealt with at the last meeting was kind of a everybody oh. or okay. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. okay, so we have, we have this joint petition in front of us um, as, as Ralph described. So these, these are taxes in arrears for taxes that should have been paid last, last year, 2019. Mm -hmm. Unrelated to, to COVID, frankly, in any, any way, it was when the economy was doing just fine. Uh, Which I think was our pause, at least the right. pause last time was because we realized this was not related to COVID. Right. This was folks' properties that were in a rearage prior to. Mr. Chairman, if I might comment. Sure. Yeah, so yes, delinquent taxes are from the past. However, most folks who have delinquent taxes are actually in a payment plan to repay those taxes. So the ability of someone to repay those back taxes uh, is definitely going to be impacted by the current coronavirus. So with unemployment rates going up and people losing their jobs, if someone has a current payment plan and is making payments, uh, the current crisis shouldn't stop them from continuing that or, or force their property to be sold. So I, I support the concept of, of delaying this upset or not doing the upset tax sale this year because the payment plans are definitely impacted by the, the current emergency situation we're in. Are, are these individuals that are in, in the, the uh, in payment plans or they have paid absolutely nothing or do we not know the details on these? I don't it's know. It's going to be the whole, the whole gamut of folks who, who owe back taxes. So some of those folks are in payment plans. A lot of them are. Uh, some of them just haven't made any payment. Yeah. Other comments from the board? We don't have a motion quite yet, but other comments from the board? Are Look for comments from the public as well. I just don't have anything on the email. Okay. Fine. Okay, so we have we have a proposed petition for 2020 tax upset upset sales. We have a motion to 
approve this proposed petition. I move that we uh, approve the proposed petition for 2020 tax subsidies. Second, May. Second. Any other, any other comments from the board? Okay. Any comments from the public regarding the petition for 2020 upset tax sales? Okay. I'll look for roll call vote. Vice Chair Blowers. Aye. 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 Ethan. Mr. Dan. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Buckwalter. Aye. Chair, aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we have 5B, Developers Agreement for High Associates, Zook, Yoder, F site. Looks like we have potentially a few people here for this. Any comments, or we're going to turn this over to Mark. Are you uh, going to speak on behalf of Pi? I'd be glad to talk uh, if. Tara unmutes me. I uh, did unmute you. <laughs> great. Unmuted, Mr. Stanley. Please, please uh, proceed. Um, we've been working with your staff for about the last two to three weeks to put uh, this developer's agreement together. There's really two driving uh, forces behind it. Uh, one, uh, the DEP um, city consent decree, which uh, requires us to go through full sewer planning uh, as opposed to processing a uh, sewer exemption module. Um, and the second is to uh, try to keep uh, the construction of Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology uh, on track. Um, right now we're uh, held, but um, we understand that as of May 8th, uh, we should be able to move forward with uh, construction on a limited basis. Um, the, um, as I mentioned, both working with your staff and Susan Pfeiffer, the township solicitor, uh, we exchanged uh, a number of different drafts going back and forth uh, with a final draft uh, being agreed to uh, and executed and, and delivered to the township towards the end of next week or the end of last week. Um, it addresses uh, a couple of things. One, allowing uh, High to uh, proceed forward with the recording of the plan uh, upon the satisfaction of all DMA uh, review comments with the exception of the full sewer planning approval. Uh, and secondly, memorializing the agreement between the township and High Associates regarding the traffic impact study uh, and the ability to obtain certificates of use and occupancy. So at this time, I believe the document uh, is in final form. We've executed it. Uh, we've delivered a uh, uh, executed copy to the township, both uh, through email and dropping a copy off at the township building. Uh, Ken Hornbeck uh, is participating by Zoom. Um, and either Ken or I could answer any questions you have, but if there's no questions by the board, we would ask uh, that the township uh, approve uh, and execute the proposed developer's agreement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any comments before we ask any questions? Ken, do you have any comments? Anything you want to add? No, no. I, I don't know. Is Ken unmuted? No, I'm not muted. Okay. Okay. All, right. All right. I didn't know if you could hear that or it was clear. Uh, I didn't hear if it was addressed to me. Was there a question? Yeah, I said, Ken, do you have any comments you want to add? Anything you would like to add to what Mark Sandy said? No, I think Mark did a great job summarizing the process and how we got to where we are. Um, so we appreciate working with uh, the township staff to put us in a position to be able to break ground as soon as the governor lifts the restriction and uh, deliver this Thaddeus Stevens uh, facility uh, before fall of next year. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from uh, the board? Uh, Dave first. No, I have no questions. Ethan? No questions. Uh, uh, no. No. no, no, no. I'll look, uh, look for a motion to approve the developer 
Oppler's agreement for high associate cook at uh, Yoder Esch? So moved. So Second. Mr. Buckwalter. Second. Second by Ethan. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, any other comments from the board members? Uh, let, let me, yeah, if, sure. If I can just, sure. just, just you know, notes of positivity, I guess. Uh, you know, I don't know what year we began working on the Zook Ash site. It was my first year on board. But uh, I'm, I'm just really excited for the community to see it continue to move forward. Uh, Ken, Mark, thank you very much. Uh, High's commitment to seeing that property move forward and to see the development of the entire Zook Ash site become a, a thriving, productive uh, parcel in this community is, is uh, a testament to what the High organization said they were going to do. 50 year plan, uh, you know, it's a tremendous investment in the community, and it is. So uh, every, every time I, I you know, turn around, I drive by that property, I see what is going to become a, a great contribution to the community. So I thank you guys. I'm excited to see Thaddeus Stevens come there. Penn, Penn College of Health Sciences, Central Penn College of Health Sciences, Thaddeus Stevens, you know, East Lane Peter is becoming an education hub as well as a business hub. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you for those kind words. Any other, uh, any other comments from the board? Any comments from the public? Anything from email, anything from people on Zoom. Okay. Uh, I will ask for a roll call vote. Uh, John? Aye. Dave? Aye. Stephen? Aye. There, aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for joining remotely. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, we have. 6A presentation regarding fire apparatus purchase proposal, Lafayette Fire Company. Can you move it? Yeah. Thank you. Chair of the uh, Emergency Services Committee, Bruce Paul, and Fire Chief for Lafayette Fire Company, Dave Keene. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, as a Corey mentioned, my name is Bruce Paul. I'm the citizen rep for Lafayette Fire Company and chairman of the Township Emergency Services Committee. Bruce, I need you to speak up. Okay. With me is Dave Keynes. He's the chief of Lafayette, and he will uh, uh, do his presentation on the proposed uh, fire engine uh, purchase. And then I'll give the Emergency Services Committee uh, response. It, it might sound better if you actually sit. If you're more comfortable standing, it's fine, but um, you, you can kind of move a little closer. Yes, let's go over. Yes. Thank you. Can you hear me okay, Tara? You're good. <clears throat> Thank you. I come before the board this evening to present a proposal for the purchase of a new fire engine to the Lafayette Fire Company. The Lafayette engine process. The new engine began a little over two years ago, early in 2018. In my opinion, the Lafayette Fire Company Engine Committee has worked hard and done a great job in planning a new fire engine that will meet the needs of the community long term. We have focused on having a basic structural pumper with a wheelbase, turning radius, and overall height requirement to aid in accessing alleys and narrow streets in small areas that have become more prevalent as our area continues to develop and grow. The unit we are proposing is a Pierce Enforcer with seating for six personnel with a 2,000 gallon per minute pump and 500 gallon per minute water tank. The unit price is currently stated at $622,000 and I'll use rounding. With the prepayment discount applied, the unit cost is reduced to $598,000. How do we intend to plan to pay for this engine? The new engine cost is $598,000 rounded. The township share is 
or $358,000. The Lafayette share is 40%, $240,000. In order to, <clears throat> to gain the discounts, we need to pay for the apparatus in full on contract signage. Lafayette would secure a low interest bank loan for the full amount to take advantage of the prepayment discounts, and we would provide a down payment of $103,000, consisting of funds on hand, a grant by the state and some uh, volunteer farmers relief association funds. The balance would be $494,000, would be a bank loan that has no payments until we would take delivery of the new engine. The in-process engine would be the collateral, therefore there's no lien on anything Lafayette. So in today's times, it's pretty much unheard of having a loan you don't have to make a payment on until one year or until you take delivery of the apparatus. But that's the deal. During the build time, Volunteer Farming Services, <clears throat> which is the funding and lending institution, would seek to acquire a 2% state FEMA loan and approximately one month prior to delivery would pay off the 3% bank loan and convert to the state loan. And not until that time, the FEMA loan, once it takes place, the township would disperse the planned share of 60% of the funding. So that's one year from contract signing. The $358,000 towards a unit purchase, leaving the remaining FEMA land balance of $136,000, which must be paid monthly and audit directly from the fire company's account. That loan payment is approximately $872 for a 15 year term loan. FEMA lands can go to a 20 year maximum, which would take the payment down to about $650 a month. We are seeking a 15 year term and there's an upside potential to actually do less, depending on what happens with the current state of the economy and the current condition of brain with the coronavirus. Emergency Services Committee like the fact that $25,000 can be saved by doing the financial loans. Um, the engine itself, the fact of a short wheelbase, uh, similar to the Whitmer engine with tighter turning radius to get in the, the new housing developments and alleys, as Dave uh, mentioned, was also viewed favorably. Uh, the proposed engine request and request for funds uh, was passed unanimously by your emergency services committee. Um, on a different note, this will probably be my last time before the board. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to thank the board and, uh, for your support uh, and this, your support of the volunteer fire companies because without you, they have a tough job to begin with. It would just be that much tougher. So, uh, on behalf of myself and the volunteer fire companies, we owe you a big thanks. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, please. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, but before we talk about that, I, I know at some point we'll, we'll thank Bruce for his service, but I spent about four years, I guess, on the Emergency Services Committee after John was on it for a long time, and now you're, you're back on, right? Yeah. Uh, but, but Bruce, I believe you were the chair. Somehow you got talking to me, the chair, for those four years that I was on. And I, frankly, I had no idea what I was walking into, but um, you did a great job. And, uh, you know, I feel like Emergency services is, of course, awesome in our community it's because of the chiefs getting along and communicating and talking and working together. And a lot of it has to do with you know, how those meetings are run formally and all the, all the informal conversations that happen outside of those meetings as well. So thank you for, for your service. Um, what questions do you have for, for Dave or Bruce? Uh, it, if you're looking for questions, I have a couple. Uh, yes. I want to understand. I wanted to understand the bridge loan. Uh, Dave, did you say that the bridge loan, no payments would be made on that until the the equipment was delivered? That is correct. I see. Okay. So actually, until one month after it's delivered. 
So we will secure a FEMA land, a state land, one month prior to delivery at the latest in order to pay off that bridge loan. So in essence, there will be no payments made on the bridge loan? Uh, none other than the down payment. I see. Yes. Ethan, any questions? No questions. I'm assuming if it's approved tonight, you sign the contract now, or? Uh, yes, we actually had an extension on the contract to okay. give us time to this meeting. The, uh, the original signing date was March, and with the COVID crisis and the cancellation of the ESC, Dave approached Pierce and asked them for an extension for the uh, prepaid discount, and Dave Pierce was good enough to work with them to uh, grant that. The question I had, you, you listed the quoted interest rate of 2%. Yes. That is locked in, or is that? That has been the typical statement for okay. as long as I can remember. Yeah. And, and that's for 15, for 20 years, is there a certain percent? It was, it's 2%, no matter how much you can lend up to $200,000, that's the maximum okay. at 2%. And, and the thought going with the 15 year versus the 20 year, that same percent is just a focus to keep the money to draw it out any longer than we have to. Sure. The idea behind the $872 is if you multiply that by 12 months, that they come up with around $10,000 a year. And if the state grant is still in existence, um, that would be enough to actually pay that loan annually. Okay. In so case they were doing something cash. locally uh, with donations. Okay. That not, you know, yeah. So in some cases, it doesn't make sense to go up 20 years if the payment's only 650 or in 3,000, we pay, you got to pay more because of the interest. Yeah. Okay. And you'll be able to meet the 15 year time frame. Yeah. Any other questions from the board members? Okay, questions from the public? Anything to touch from email or? I'll take out email. Any questions from members of the public? Okay. Okay. Um, I will look for um, a motion to approve the recommendation from the Emergency Services Committee for the purchase of the uh, new apparatus by Lafayette Fire. So moved. Second by John, second by Glenn. Uh, any other comments from the board? Any other comments from the public? Any motion made and second? Uh, John, vote. Aye. 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 Dave. Aye. Ethan. Aye. There is aye. Motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Again, Bruce, thank you for everything. Chief Keens, thank you for everything Lafayette is doing. Plus, great to see Steve Gribble on the phone, on the Zoom as well. Thank you to all four of our fire companies. This is uh, trying times, and I said it last meeting, thank you for all the first responders, EMS, fire, police, healthcare workers. Really appreciate everything you guys are doing. It's not easy, I know. Thank you for your support also. We couldn't do it without you. Thanks, guys. Bruce, we'll have you back. And uh, yeah, and I'm lost for the conversation with you for sure. So, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate your time. Yeah, fine. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have proposed zoning amendment for review and distribution. Commercial redevelopment overlay zone C3. Uh, the board heard a presentation uh, from, uh, from the uh, owners and representatives of, of the shops at Rockvale uh, a couple of meetings ago, I think. And uh, at that time, uh, they indicated that uh, they were going to finalize the preparation of an application or a petition to amend the zoning ordinance uh, by creating a proposal to amend the, the zoning ordinance to create a, a commercial redevelopment overlay zone 
in the C3 zoning district. They have done that, they've submitted that, um, and uh, they're asking that the, the board uh, this evening uh, take action to accept that uh, proposal and to uh, send it out to all of the planning partners that have to review uh, zoning amendments um, and proceed with the process uh, toward uh, holding a public hearing, uh, at which time the board would hear from the public on the proposal and then uh, ultimately, you know, make a decision on uh, the proposed amendment. Um, if Mr. Stanley Ward was there, but I think Mr. Stanley's not there anymore, so. Claudia, Claudia's there. <laughs> well, oh, I'm sorry, Claudia, I didn't see. No problem. Used to this. Yeah, I'm here on behalf of Rockville Acquisitions. I'm, you know, that was a perfect summary of what we're here requesting tonight, and I'm happy to answer any questions that the board has about the proposal. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you much for the, the overview. So the just the, the uh, neighboring municipalities. Uh, so that's sort of an interesting area of the township, right? So you have Strasburg Barrow. Does it go as far as Strasburg Township? Yeah, actually the borough or is actually first then there. The, yeah, the borough would be included. They're not adjacent to it. So it would be has to be adjacent. Has to be adjacent okay. and it would be all the way all around the township around. of the school district and the county planning commission as well. All have to receive copies and uh, have an opportunity yeah. to provide comments. 45 day comment period yeah. once they receive. And we would also send to West Earl since they're part of our Conestoga Regional Comprehensive Plan. Yeah. Claudia, have you had conversations with any of the neighboring municipalities or is this them seeing it from the formal documents would be the first time they see it? We have not had those conversations yet, but we certainly will as the if you you know refer the petition on tonight. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the board? Claudia. The staff has reviewed the document in full and complete. Uh, it is a complete submission. We haven't reviewed it uh, thoroughly yet. Yeah, which that's part, part of the process. 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 Yeah. Understood. Okay. Any other questions, Dave or Ethan? No, I understand this simply to be a um, accepting this for review and and uh, distribution. So we're not really reviewing it tonight. Right. Um, but I, I just want to comment that I, I'm eager to help this uh, owner do something here that is going to be um, a solution to a situation I believe needs addressed. Yeah. So. Yes. It seems like the situation is definitely exasperated with the COVID crisis. I mean, all retail essentially being shut down except grocery stores. This cannot um, help some of the struggling retail that you know was, was happening prior to, to, to this, this request. So, um, agree, Dave. Thanks for making that line. Okay, I will uh, accept a motion to accept the proposed uh, zoning amendment for review and distribution. Dave uh, moved. Second. Ethan second. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Any other comments from the public? Such any emails or no? Nothing on the email. Okay. Okay. We'll do a voice uh, roll call vote. John. Aye. 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 Dave. Aye. Ethan. Aye. Chair, aye. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, Claudia, for joining. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, no items under seven for action items. We have managers reports. A, Lincoln Highway East Street State Plan Implementation Report. Uh, just briefly to report to the board, we, we continue to keep our eye on the ball here with. The streetscape plan, but there hasn't been a whole lot happening uh, during the, the COVID crisis. So we did have our uh, regular bi-monthly update meeting uh, on Friday, April 3rd. Uh, 
uh, with the design engineer uh, for the Western Gateway project and with our own design engineer working on the, with the various phases of projects. So um, our next meeting of that group is scheduled for June 5th. And uh, hopefully by that time, you know, they can be released to go out and do things like survey work and, and things that'll help the process move along. So we're still working on that. You want me to just yeah, keep sure, going? Keep going. Okay, okay, so um, as far as the uh, Walnut Street extension and, and Greater Lancaster Heritage Pathway, um, we have continued to be in communication with High Associates who's doing the design work. Uh, fortunately, they had gotten survey work done uh, prior to the crisis beginning, so they've been able to work on the actual engineering of the project. Uh, their uh, process will be to next uh, submit um, uh, their next submission to PennDOT uh, by the end of this month, which will include the, the first uh, blush at the line and grade uh, for both facilities. So um, that continues to move along. Um, as far as uh, public meetings and, and pandemic issues, um, the park board meeting scheduled for April 22nd has been canceled. Um, our public works staff continues to have difficulties with um, what are called flushable wipes, but they really aren't. <laughs> um, they are creating problems in the sewer system. So um, you know, we just want to continue to encourage people to throw those in the trash, don't uh, flush them. Um, uh, sewer bill payments uh, that were sent out at the beginning of April uh, have continued to come in at pretty much a regular pace. So just want to let you know that uh, that uh, billing process is pretty much normal at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, all the department heads and myself are uh, actively engaged in the process of reviewing the 2020 budget for items that could be eliminated or delayed in order to reduce expenses uh, given the expected losses of revenue uh, from the various taxing sources that are gonna be impacted by this crisis. Um, so I'll be bringing proposals in that regard back to the board members for consideration at future meetings. Sure, yeah, thank you. Anything we can do at the board to help to assist? Uh, uh, sure, if you have any ideas on, the, on areas that you think would be uh, you know, priority places to look for uh, reductions in expenses, we're happy to include yeah. those thoughts in our, uh, in our efforts. Okay, well, that's a good, it's not an easy thing to do, right? I mean, government has to stay open and our expenses are essentially fixed for many things and projects clearly could be delayed, but those have often have long-term impact to, you know, if we hold off on repaving a road, the road gets worse and then ends up being more expensive down the road. So I think we have to be somewhat judicious in how we save and it ends up being more expensive down the road. Right, we're still trying to evaluate uh, what the revenue impacts are gonna be. Right. So right. Uh, all of that is gonna yeah. be, yeah. Um, you know, our best efforts to, right. to estimate those things yeah. and, and uh, bring that information to you. Yeah, I, I mean, assuming uh, time will give us more data, right? So meaning, you know, the, dis the real estate discount rate ends April 30th by May, Sometime in May, we should know what we collected. I'm using, using me as an example. My taxes are escrowed. My bank wants to get the 2% discount. I want to get the 2% discount. It's, you know, hopefully it's been received already by the, you know, um, by the Bureau. So, um, but, uh, you know, I guess by May, we should have a really good idea, of, at least from a discount perspective, who, who is paid. I think the sewer bill is a good litmus. You know, I mean, it's a lot less clearly, but you know, people are still paying that. Hopefully, that that, that means better news. Yeah, the ones that are going to be uh, more challenging are, are going to be the earned income tax, yeah, the local services tax, and the admissions tax. Right. Uh, are are right. are going to be hit hard. Yeah. 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 The admissions tax produces a hefty sum of money. Right. It does. Um, I, I think. I think it's the budget was about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars this year, mm -hmm. um, and you know we really only had you know two months. Uh, of course, Dutch Wonderland wasn't really right. open at that time, so it was American Music Theater is right. the, 
is the, the second uh, highest risk, highest generator there. So um, they had a couple of months, but yeah, you know, that's right. right. Yeah, I haven't seen Dutch Wonderland. I haven't seen that they announced. I know Hershey Park announced June fifteenth as a tentative. Start. Right. I, I have not heard a, a, an announcement in that regard either. Right. Okay. What do you think we decide on the uh, stormwater tanks that will never start? I forget. Uh, at this point, it's planned to begin with the July billing. So mm -hmm. we'll go out with the uh, sanitary sewer bills and, and the July first billing. Is that that's something we should look at as far as delay, or is that much of an overlooked and delay to the beginning of next year? Or is that not that big a bill, but kind of bad time to start a new tax? Yeah, um, you know, I'm sure that you know, ultimately the way the structure is set up at this point, that's going to be the sewer authority's decision. Yeah. But you know, your input on that would be very important to them. So yeah. um, you know, if, if you guys feel that you know for the community, it's important that that be delayed. Um, you know, that's certainly something yeah. we can communicate through the authority. Sure. Um, it will, it will create, you know, issues. We, we haven't heard anybody at the DEP say, don't worry about 2023 deadline to, to get all this right. stuff done. You know, you can wait five more years and right. that hasn't happened. I, I don't expect it will happen. Right. So, um, we're, we're kind of still under the gun to, to get stuff done. If we don't have the resources to get it done, um, we're going to be in trouble in a couple of years. Yeah, I, mean, I was just, well, let's, let's bring it up again. You know, we saw some time before implementation. We can right. discuss it at the next meeting. Find the general agenda to, to have it as a discussion point so we don't forget to figure out we should give that, give that uh, direction to the sewer authority. Okay. Uh, any any other comments from uh, go, <clears throat> the board first? Are Are you looking for comments regarding anything in addition to the agenda? Yeah. Anything Anything in addition to the well, for you for you, Dave? Anything? <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored. Hey, uh, just comment about the mic again. Um, you know, when Ken was on, he didn't know that you were addressing him, and uh, it was. I, I, it's better than what it was last month. I don't know, Ethan, do you want to comment from where you sit? Yeah, only one of the mics is working, which is the way it was when we tested it and the second time we tested it. So unless you're running a different piece of software, you can't use two mics. I see. Okay, I'm not sure which mic. The, uh, one, the one closest to John seems to be working. Okay. Okay, we will we'll test that and we'll get that get that working. Uh, it is this meeting clearly I'm wearing a mask. Last meeting I was not. It's, this is not easy to talk through and uh, fogs up my glasses, so it doesn't. Uh, again, not easy. So uh, well with the with the Senate Bill eight fifty one that eight forty one that was uh, signed today by the governor, we could all go remote just fine. So the requirement to have a quorum at the office is no longer there for the duration of the emergency. Okay. Good. good, good to know. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the public for non-agenda items? Okay. Okay, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Remove. Second. Second. Second by John. I'll do a, a quick voice vote on the roll call vote. John? Aye. Aye. Dave? Aye. Ethan? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. Thanks, guys. See you. Good to see you. See you, Dave.